All right, so over the last few years, we've all watched context windows get bigger and bigger. 8,000 tokens turned into 32, then 100,000, then suddenly everyone's talking about million token models. And on paper, that sounds like the problem is basically solved. Just stuff everything into the prompt and let the model figure it out, except that's not how it plays out in real use. Performance drops, answers get fuzzy, costs explode, and at some point the model just kind of loses the plot. That's where this new idea comes in. And it's not a bigger model, not a wider window, not a clever compression trick. It's a totally different way of thinking about what a language model should even see in the first place. What MIT and later Prime Intellect are proposing with recursive language models, or RLMs, is a shift in mindset. Instead of forcing the model to swallow a massive prompt all at once, you treat that prompt like an external world the model can explore. The model doesn't read everything. It pokes around, inspects pieces, writes code to search through it, and even calls smaller versions of itself to help. That sounds abstract at first, but once you break it down, it's surprisingly intuitive. Let's start with the core problem they're trying to solve. Even the best frontier models today suffer from something researchers now openly call context rot. As inputs get longer, quality drops. And the drop is faster when the task is more complex. A simple search task, like finding a specific phrase hidden somewhere in a huge document, scales pretty well. But tasks where the answer depends on many parts of the input, or worse, on relationships between many parts, fall apart quickly. This shows up very clearly in benchmarks like Oolong and Oolong pairs, where models are asked to transform or compare large numbers of entries instead of just retrieving one fact. In the MIT paper, they visualize this with GPT-5. As you increase input length from a few thousand tokens all the way up to hundreds of thousands, GPT-5's performance drops sharply, especially on tasks with linear or quadratic complexity. On Oolong pairs, which requires pairwise aggregation across the input, GPT-5 basically collapses. F1 scores drop close to zero. And this happens even before you hit the hard context limit. So the issue isn't just not enough tokens, it's how the model processes them. Instead of stuffing a huge prompt into the AI's brain, all that text just sits outside the model, like a giant document on a desk. The AI doesn't read it all up front. It looks at it only when it needs to. The model gets a simple set of instructions on how to interact with that document. It can skim parts of it, search for specific words, pull out small sections, take notes, and even ask a smaller AI for help on just one tiny piece. So instead of drowning in information, it moves step by step, checking only what matters. You can think of it like this. The AI isn't memorizing the whole book anymore. It's flipping pages, highlighting lines, and calling in an assistant to summarize a paragraph when needed. Behind the scenes, there's one main AI running the show. That main AI is connected to a workspace where the full input lives. It can poke around, run quick searches, break the big text into smaller chunks, and hand those chunks to cheaper, smaller AIs to process. Once it has everything it needs, it puts the answer together and sends it back. To you, it still feels like a normal chat. You ask one question, you get one answer. What's powerful about this is that the AI stops thinking in terms of how much can I fit in my memory and starts thinking in terms of how do I work through this information? It's not about reading everything. It's about navigating it, and that changes everything when inputs get massive. There's a benchmark where the AI gets up to 1,000 full documents at once. That's millions of words. No normal model can read all of that in one go. It's not even close. But with this setup, the AI doesn't try to. It just scans, searches, and zooms in on the parts that matter. Everything else stays in the background, untouched. That's the real breakthrough here. The size of the input stops being the main limit. What matters instead is how smart the AI is at finding its way through information. On that benchmark, the results are honestly hard to ignore. When RLM is paired with GPT-5, it reaches a little over 91% accuracy, and the average cost per question comes in at just under $1. To put that into perspective, the old school approach where you force the model to read everything directly would cost somewhere between one and a half and nearly three dollars per query, and that's assuming the model could even handle that much data in the first place. And the gap gets even more obvious on tougher tasks. Take code QA from Longbench v2. With GPT-5 on its own, accuracy is 24%. If you add a summarization agent on top, that number jumps to 41.33%, which already looks like a solid improvement. 
but once you switch to an RLM setup, accuracy climbs to 62%. What's really interesting is what happens when you strip things back even further. There's an ablation where the model gets access to the REPL environment, but no recursive subcalls at all, and that version actually hits 66% accuracy. That's higher than the full RLM in this case. And that's a big signal. It shows that simply moving the context out of the model's head and into an external environment already makes a massive difference. Even before recursion enters the picture, the model just works better when it doesn't have to carry everything in memory at once. Now look at Oolong pairs, the quadratic task. This is where things get wild. GPT-5 by itself gets an F1 score of about 0.04. That's essentially useless. Summarization agents hover near zero. Kodak with retrieval gets to about 24.67. The full RLM jumps to 58.00. And even the REPL-only variant, with no recursion, hits around 43.93. For Quen 3 Coder, a massive open model, the base scores stay below 0.1 F1, while the full RLM reaches 23.11. The REPL gives the model a place to push all that context so it's not overloaded. The recursive subcalls give it a way to actually reason over that context in manageable chunks. The MIT paper also shows what these models actually do while they're working, step by step. And once you see it, it makes a lot of sense. First, the model just takes a quick look. It glances at the beginning of the input to understand what kind of mess it's dealing with. Is this a list, a pile of documents, logs, code, or something else entirely? That first glance helps it decide what to do next. After that, it gets selective. Instead of reading everything, it starts searching. It looks for words, patterns, or lines that seem relevant and ignores the rest. So the model is already cutting down the problem without actually loading everything into its head. When things get more complicated, it stops trying to handle the data all at once. It breaks the big input into smaller pieces, like individual lines or documents. Each piece gets handled separately, sometimes by smaller helper models. The main model stays in control, collecting the useful bits and combining them into one answer. Now, when the final answer itself is very long, RLMs use another simple trick. They don't try to write the whole thing in one go. They build it piece by piece, saving parts as they go, and then glue everything together at the end. That's how they get around the usual output limits. They're not talking nonstop, they're assembling. This is also why the word recursive actually matters here. The model can go back, ask again, refine something, or check its own work using smaller, focused calls. Sometimes that helps catch mistakes that would normally happen when too much information gets mixed together. Other times, it just means extra work and higher cost. And the paper doesn't hide that. Some runs are fast and clean, others wander around, double checking too much and getting expensive. But the important part is that the model now has a way to work through information instead of being overwhelmed by it. That brings us to cost and efficiency. On average, RLMs are surprisingly competitive. In many cases, the median RLM run is cheaper than a single base model call that tries to handle everything directly. But the variance is high. Some runs are cheap and efficient. Others wander around for a long time, making many subcalls and get expensive. The authors point out that all their implementations use synchronous, blocking calls, no parallelism, no learned policies for when to stop. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit here. This is also where Prime Intellect comes in. They took the MIT blueprint and turned it into a concrete system called RLMNV. The way they set it up is very intentional. The main AI, the one making decisions, only gets access to a simple workspace. No web browsing, no huge tool outputs, no messy data flooding its memory. All the heavy lifting, things like web search or file access, gets pushed to smaller helper models. The main model stays focused on thinking, not digging. They also give it a way to send out many small tasks at once using something called LLM, batch. So instead of doing everything one by one, it can split work up and handle things faster. And there's a very strict rule at the end. The model has to clearly write its final answer into a specific place and mark it as done. No half-finished thoughts, no wandering off. That separation turns out to be really important. Huge chunks of text never get dumped into the main model's memory. They stay outside, in the environment. The main model only sees short summaries, notes, and intermediate results. That keeps everything manageable and stops the system from choking on its own inputs. Prime Intellect tested this setup across several very different scenarios. One of them, Deep Dive, is all about web research with extremely long and noisy pages. Another, Math Python, focuses on hard competition-style math problems using a coding environment. They also reused Oolong directly and added verbatim copy, which checks whether the system can reproduce complex data like JSON, CSV files, 
or mixed code exactly. Across all of these, models like GPT-5 Mini and Prime Intellect's own Intellect 3 MOE became noticeably more reliable once they were wrapped in this RLM structure. Something else really interesting shows up when you compare models. Both GPT-5 and Quen-3 Coder get much better when used as RLMs, but they don't behave the same way. On Browse Comp Plus, RLM with GPT-5 almost solves the benchmark. RLM with Quen-3 Coder, on the other hand, struggles on about half of the tasks. What's wild is that the system prompt is basically identical. The only difference is one extra warning telling Quen-3 Coder not to overuse helper calls. That tiny change leads to very different behavior. GPT-5 tends to be cautious and selective. Quen-3 Coder is more aggressive and starts splitting things up line by line, especially on Oolong-style tasks. Same structure, different instincts. This points to something important. RLMs are supposed to work with any model, and in theory they do, but in practice, how well they perform depends a lot on how good the base model is at making judgment calls. Right now, these models haven't been trained specifically for that kind of decision making. They're figuring it out on the fly. The authors are pretty honest about the limits. Current RLMs only go one level deep. The helper calls are just normal language models, not full RLMs themselves. Everything runs sequentially, not in parallel. There's no reinforcement learning guiding when to split, when to stop, or how much checking is enough. Sometimes the model overthinks, keeps verifying the same answer, burns through budget, and still ends up wrong. But that's also where the upside is. The paper argues that these RLM runs are basically a new kind of reasoning trace, and reasoning traces can be trained. If you combine this structure with reinforcement learning, you could teach models how to explore huge inputs efficiently, how deep to recurse, and when it's time to stop. Better models and better systems would stack on top of each other. For a long time, improvement meant training bigger models with more data and more compute. RLMs add a new dimension at inference time. The limit is no longer how much fits in the context window. It's how well the model can navigate information that lives outside of it. In a way, this borrows ideas from classical computer science. Out of core algorithms process data sets much larger than memory by carefully managing what gets loaded when. RLMs are doing something similar for language models. Small, fast, working memory, combined with symbolic access to a huge external store. And the results are already hard to ignore. Handling 10 million tokens, solving tasks that completely break frontier models, doing it at comparable or lower cost, all without changing the underlying model architecture. So when people ask whether we'll get to agents that can handle massive code bases, entire company knowledge graphs, or months of logs without forgetting crucial details, this is one of the most concrete answers we've seen so far. So, is this the end of context windows even mattering? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and if this helped you understand what's really changing under the hood, hit like, subscribe for more deep dives like this, and thanks for watching.